Okay, today we've got another mechanism challenge. We have this very interesting looking starting material. We've got some conditions. We know exactly what we're going to be getting to. But as always, we need to draw the mechanism explicitly. We need all the electron pushing arrows. We want to know exactly how this happens. So uh, take a couple of minutes and see if you can figure this out. Okay, so starting out here, obviously we're going to do some interesting chemistry with this. We've got a six-membered ring. Turns out to, uh, it ends up being a seven-membered ring. This is most likely our seventh carbon right there. So we need to figure out how that three-membered ring is going to open up. So we need to probably induce some instability. The key here is this reagent. We've got this silver boron tetrafluoride. So this is an ionic uh, substance, obviously. So we've got Ag plus and we've got BF4 minus. So actually what is going to happen here, this silver ion can stabilize uh, a bromide. So th this is probably going to begin uh, an electrostatic interaction in solution, which enables this bond to break. So this bromine, uh, or the bromide, I should say, is just going to leave uh, and coordinate with silver. So that is going to get us here, we've still got a six-membered ring. Uh, let me draw that one again. We've still got a six-membered ring, uh, but we've got this uh, here. And then now, however, we have just one bromine and we have a formal positive charge on this a little uh, carbon on the point there. So how can this uh, uh, alleviate this uh, this uh, positive charge. This is definitely not favorable, right? We've got a positive charge directly adjacent. To, uh, it's on a three-membered ring, first of all, so that's not great. But as it happens, this can pop open. So it's a little bit of a small arrow, but let's have this carbon-carbon bond go ahead and pop this ring open and coordinate right there. So what is going to happen if we do that? So now we're going to have the seven-member ring. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, did I get that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good enough. Um, and so uh, this is going to be one, two, one, two. We've got the other bromine there. Let's put this pi bond here so that we can put the resulting positive charge right here adjacent to that aromatic ring. So this pi bond is going to swing up like that, not literally, but we can think of it that way. So this carbon maintains uh, its tetravalent status, but this carbon right here has lost a bond so we're going to put that there. Obviously, there are two resonance structures. We certainly could put the pi bond there and the positive charge over here. This one's more strongly contributing because it's adjacent to the aromatic ring, but uh, we do obviously have resonance. We have partial positive charge on two different carbons here. So now this is where methanol is going to come in. And, uh, and so let's go ahead and uh, let's have, uh, yeah, methanol. Let's have this attack. Uh, the we we could draw. We could have this attack the other resonance structure. But also, what's just as easy is we could just have this attack at this position here. Kick that pi bond over there. It's a little. It's more sterically available. The resulting pi bond is then conjugated to the ring. So there's a number of reasons why this is the more favorable site of attack uh, for methoxide. But that is going to be what it is. So boom, boom. Uh, Br is there, there, and then we need one, two more like that. So there is oxygen, and there is that, and we've got a positive charge there. Uh, and then all we need to do is have another methoxide go and do the proton transfer and neutralize. And that is going to get us to our product. So what did we do here? A couple of interesting things. 
Uh, number one, we had this weird little three-membered ring sitting on top of the six-membered ring with the two bromines. It was this reagent with the silver cation that uh, that sort of enabled uh, this chemistry to occur because the bromide uh, needs something in solution to stabilize it in order to leave. It's got this positively charged silver ion that it can coordinate to, so AGBR is gonna be in solution that, uh, that enables the bromide to leave. That leaves us with this positive charge here, which is the perfect opportunity to pop open that six-membered ring. Now, it's true that a seven-membered ring is not as stable as a six-membered ring, but we are also getting rid of a three-membered ring uh, in, order to do, in order to do it. Uh, and a three-membered ring is very unstable, and in particular, a, uh, a three-membered ring with a positive charge on it. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of impetus to, to neutralize that positive charge and open up that ring. So that pops open, we get the positive charge, we get a pi bond here, and we get the positive charge adjacent to the aromatic ring, and then methoxide is going to attack here. We could have had it attack the other resonance structure, but this is just as well. Again, that's so that this pi bond can remain conjugated to the aromatic ring. We've got, uh, me we've got methanol on there, another methanol just goes and deprotonates, and there is our product with our seven-membered ring right there. So that's some, in that's some uh, interesting chemistry for today's mechanism challenge. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, professordaveexplains at gmail.com.